Okay, we are recording. So uh, leadership, we're going to be talking about time management today. And uh, this is important because time management is an area that influences how much influence we have on everyone else. There is what's considered five different levels of influence. Uh, level number one is influence on family members, uh, people that you're close with, your, your own kids, maybe grandkids or nieces or nephews. That's like a level number one influencer. A level two influencer would be somebody who has influence on a, a few more outside of their immediate family, maybe a, a business owner, uh, maybe even a school teacher would have some influence. And then a, a level three is somebody who has influence on a community of people. Uh, so level two would be like maybe a Sunday school teacher. A level three would be maybe somebody who works for a city or just is influential in the city and therefore a lot of people listen. Um, if you got to level five, you're looking at more like a president or uh, somebody who's a CEO of a major corporation. Like I can't think of his name right now, but the guy that's uh, running Tesla, uh, he's an influencer. Or, or Steve Jobs was a major influencer, a level five type of individual. Typically, though, influence gets bottlenecked by time. And so how we use our time and what we do with our time determines how much influence we will have. Now, the average person, the average male, uh, you know, if you're just to go through their day, they, they go to work, uh, they take their wives on dates once or twice a month, they uh, mow the lawns, they're taking care of the kids and getting all the honeydews out of the way. And so that sucks up and absorbs most of their time. And so therefore, they tend to be a level one influencer. Uh, they are, their skill level would be an amateur. But the more we learn how to use our time wisely, the more influence we can have. And influence is a skill. I'm sorry, time management is a skill. It's a discipline that we use that helps us to, to do more. Uh, it's easy to spend time doing other things throughout the day. In fact, one of the things, or tell me, what is one of the number one things people spend uh, a major, or a good chunk of their day doing? They spend up On an average American spends four hours doing this every single day. Can you guys Guess what that is? Watching TV. Probably TV. Social media. Yeah, TV, and I think social media or any of those screen times will, will add into it. Uh, so we need to be good stewards of our time. So that way we can do more uh, with the time that we have. So let's go ahead and we're going to jump right into this. I'm going to try to make sure I'm good, I manage our time tonight and get us done on time. So the first one is, number one, most people – if they knew that they only had one month to live, would accomplish more in those 30 days than any 30-day period that they'd ever lived. Question then is thrown out at you. Why is that the case? Because they're put on a time period, so like they're limited to like what they're going to do in that yep. time. So. They are then managing their time more wisely, and that leads into number two. Most people, if they knew that they only had one month to live, would live those days with a totally different set of priorities than any thirty-day period of their life. If you had 30 days left, and you knew you only had 30 days left to live, what would you do with those 30 days? I'm afraid to say. <laughs> Who knows, man? If somebody told me I had 30 days to live, it might just be the old me come right back to life. Who knows? I don't know. Couldn't answer that question unless it was delivered to me, really, for real. I would like to hope that I would get myself right with God. But then you never know that flesh might take over and you might just want to go off the deep end because it's all coming to an end. I would want to see places like around the world. That I haven't seen before within those three time phase. 
and then I'd like to see family every single one of those days. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah just spend it with those you love. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is, is why don't we make those more priorities in our life? We take time for granted. We think we're going to live forever. I think that's true. All right. Uh, let's move on to number three. God wants us to make good use of all of our time, even if we have a hundred years left to live. So even if we do have more time, God wants us to use it wisely. The question is, is why does God want us to make the use of all of our time here on earth? We're here to further his kin kingdom, not our own. Yes. To do the things that he has called us to do. Not be focused on self. In fact, uh, let's look at Ephesians here. Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men who waste their time and play video games and watch TV all day, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. So then, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So, do you understand the, God's will for your life, and are you doing the things He called you to do? Number four, very few things are more effective in time management than the good old-fashioned to-do list. If my wife wants me to get something done around the house, I keep telling her over and over, write it down, put it on the fridge. Write it down, put it on the fridge. Because if it's not on the fridge, I won't remember to do it. I won't do it. I will choose to forget to do it. Perfect. But if it's on the fridge, got to do it. Because everybody so in the whole house. It takes you like two to three months to do it once it's on the fridge. Well, oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, like once it's on the fridge, it's like a three month. <laughs> Period before <laughs> Mason, you're gonna get whooping tonight when he gets home. <laughs> I gotta tell you though, there was a uh, um, Bakersfield was worse. You're better at it now, but it was worse before. I am probably better at it now because I take it more seriously. Uh, but even it helps me. Like for example, we changed up the lights in the kitchen and the, the ballast for us in light and. Um, by the way, Doug, I didn't get it done finally. Uh, and uh, I kept changing the ballast out and it wasn't working. Couldn't get a new ballast. I kept shopping around trying to find it. And finally, I bought a conversion kit to change it all to LED. So I just, I'll be done with the ballast. And my wife said to me, I want to go camping for our anniversary. And so I told her, I said, well, this was on my to-do list to get done on this particular day. If we go camping, that's going to eliminate me from getting that done. And she says, that's okay. You can do it when we get back. And so uh, they got done today. We've been camping for the last few days. Um, even though I came back here to do the service and do a bunch of other stuff. I sure the service went online. But uh, if there was no list for me to do, then it would never get done. Uh, so that is good for all of us to have a to-do list. It, it helps us to uh, avoid distractions. It helps us to, to make sure that we make sure we all of our goals are manageable. Uh, keeps us grounded and uh, helps us even source, use our brain capacity because I can't remember everything. When I went camping, I had to make a list of everything I needed to do to, to, to pack it away so that way I wouldn't forget. Because inevitably, if I don't do that, I'll forget something. Even when I do make a list, I still tend to forget something. But this way, I tend to forget more. Uh, and then it helps me just to avoid distractions when I have a to do list. Because I have discovered that this device right here will gladly take up all of my time if I allow it. There are multiple opportunities to waste time on cell phone. So number five, oh no, I'm sorry, Psalm 139, I forgot about this. 139 verse 16, your eyes have seen my unformed substance and in your book were all written the days that were ordered, ordained for me when as yet there was not one of them. God has ordained our day. Number five, 
write a daily to-do list will help us prioritize the things that we want to accomplish in a day. Want to accomplish your goals? Put it on your to-do list to read your goals every single day. Want to read through the Bible? Put it on your to-do list to read your Bible today. You want to pray? Put it on your to-do list. Suddenly these things are taking much more importance because they're on your list and it feels good to cross them out. So there's like a reward system like, yeah, I got that done. Um, want to listen to a podcast and put it on your on your list, a to-do list to get that done. So you can get that out of the, uh, cross that off. Uh, reading a book, memorizing your verses. Those will help you prioritize and put those up, above and say, okay, I'm going to do these things before I focus on these other things. These other things are important, but being focused on God is more important. Helps us see the big picture. Uh, Stephanie has just built a chicken coop, and I asked her if she had any type of to-do list or anything like that, and she said, yes, yeah, she did. She, she had drawings and measurements figured out so that when she went to the store, she knew what to get, so she didn't have to make 300 trips to the store to buy something. She had a list of things to get do list about what she was doing at each stage. Number six, writing goals helps us establish the priorities of our life. So what do you put on your to-do list? Things that help you establish your goals. What do you read every day? Your goals, because it's on your to-do list. So you remember what is your priority. Happy anniversary, by the way. Thank you. It was nice. Glad you guys got to get out. Yeah, so was I. <laughs> I needed it. I didn't think I, re I didn't think I realized how badly I needed it, but I needed it. So, how do goals influence our to-do list? Kind of prioritize them before. I mean, it, it, you look at your goals and you kind of tend to see which one you want. To happen first, you know. Yep. I mean, they kind of just go hand in hand. They do. Oh, yeah. If you write down your goals, then you on your to do list, you have how are you gonna for each day you're gonna have how are you gonna achieve the goals that you want to on your to do list. Yep. And that's gonna lead into number seven. We need to make sure that we make the faithful accomplishment of the basic disciplines of the Christian life a high priority in our lives. And we do that uh, by making our list that we're going to study the Word of God, we're going to memorize it, we're going to read it, we're going to listen to the podcast, um, look at the book. So here's my a question for you. Um, how many of you guys have felt the increasing pressure or the pinch when um, – when we've been increasing the disciplines. For example, at first, we just had you guys memorize the verse and study the quiz. And then we added in prayer and Bible and podcast. And, um, you know, we keep increasing this. So how many of you guys have felt any type of, of an extra pinch with those increased disciplines? I haven't felt any. I've been doing that for the last year anyhow. I mean, I've been listening to D Dukes and not even knowing it was D Dukes every morning when I go out there to do my workout, but yeah. it really hasn't done nothing to me other than, the, you know, there's a little more time with the memorizing the verses and the, the quiz, everything else I've pretty much been doing beforehand. You know, Paul, when I was working, it was, it was, you know, a lot tougher to, uh, Try towards my time, and uh, of course now not working, it sure is a lot easier. But I, it's it's harder to stay diligent. So I guess when you're busier, sometimes it makes it easier. When you have that repetition of schedule. Yeah, yeah. So I'm right now. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. But yeah, working was definitely a little bit of pressure at times. Yeah, because you you know you want to do well. What about those? Mason or uh, Ken or Doug, you guys have got school or work. What about you guys? Um, I've been doing most of the things, but then, like, I wasn't doing podcasts before, so that makes it a little bit harder. 
Yeah, it just kind of depends on, yeah, the season. I mean, not being in the school right now, in some ways, it, there's more time, but in other ways, I don't know, there's different time demands. So still making it a priority has been hard just because I say, oh, I just have a little bit more time later, I'll do that. And then it just doesn't get, it doesn't happen. <laughs> so um, I think it was easier with a routine sometimes being in the actual physical building of the school and then could plan out more accordingly. I 100% get 100% less work done when I try to work at home. Always. I enjoy coming to the office. <laughs> All right. I, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's uh, I just feel like I don't have any time lately, so just feel drained all the time, and uh, not really prioritizing very well for making time for this. So working on it, but I just just been busy. But there's always excuses, I guess. But yep. Well, I will lift uh, you up in prayer, Doug. So you can and, handle that. And that's what this is about, too. This is about all of us learning how to, to do this better. And, and I'm getting better at, at this, but I am no by, my, no, by no means professional uh, yet. I'm still getting better. Let's go ahead and uh, well, look at Psalm 3410. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger because they're young and they're foolish and they spend time playing. But they who seek the Lord shall not be in want of any good thing because God supplies. Um, number eight, if we don't make these important in our life, we won't have the wisdom or the energy to accomplish great things with our life. We'll talk a little bit more about energy, how we get more energy. How we get more wisdom. So if you want to accomplish something great, you're learning how to do the basic discipline is what leads to that. Uh, if you want your kids to know Christ, what do you have to do? I'm sorry, I missed that question. What was that? If you want your kids to know Christ when they're little, it's harder to do when they get older, but when they're little, if you want your kids to know Christ, what do you have to do? You got to start feeding them while they're young and, and sharing yeah. with them. And make that a priority in your life so it's a priority in their life. Because, for example, you could tell uh, you could tell a child, hey, um, if you want TV time, you got to read 30 minutes of book or 30 minutes of a book before you get 30 minutes of television. But yet you alone won't read a book in front of them. Well, then what they see that is it's almost like as a punishment. Because mom and dad aren't making it a priority, so then why should I make it a priority in my life? Yep. So if you want it to be a priority, then in my family, we've got to read. All of us are supposed to be reading, um, so that way my kids go, okay, well this is important in our life. Uh, if I want my kids to know Christ, then I need to spend make time to teach them about Christ. That's and I don't want you guys to think I'm some kind of rock there for you know I'm. I miss our structure. I miss our Monday morning men's Bible study and our, you know, our Wednesday youth group and our Sunday get together. I mean, it, it, it's been a challenge for me as well to stay committed. And, you know, King David said, sometimes you got to encourage yourself, you know, and you just got to get strength from somewhere. For, and you know who Jesus. So mm -hmm. it's, I'm not, I'm not no, Anyhow, <laughs> well, if you uh, if you want more energy in your life, then you need to spend the and you need to spend the time you have focused or focus your energy on the time that you do have. So, if you want to have more uh, energy to get things done, then you need to use the time you have wisely so that you get more energy. Think of it like this: you have uh, the story of the of the talents that Jesus says. Or tells uh, where he gives three different men. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna skip the middle one, but he gives one man uh, a bunch of money. He says, Go invest this or take this money, and then when I come back, I want it back. And that guy takes the money and he invests it, makes lots of money. So when the, when the owner comes back, the master comes back, he's like, Here, I invest what you gave me, 
And so uh, the master's happy. He says, man, you did awesome with what I gave you. So I'm going to double my, your portion. I'm going to give you even more now. And then the other guy he gave money to, uh, he says, okay, take this money. When I come back, you know, um, I'll be come back to collect it. Well, that money, he didn't, that guy didn't even take his money and put it in the bank. He went and buried it. He did nothing with it. So when the master came back, he's like, here's your money. You're, I know you're a harsh master, so I just hid your money. And that guy is like, then you wicked servant. You didn't even invest what I gave you, so I'm not going to give you any more. In fact, I'm going to take what you have and give it to somebody else. So if you were God and you were looking at people who were wasting their time, would you invest more energy in them, or would you give that to somebody who is using their time wisely? All right. So if you want yeah. more energy, then we got to prioritize where we're spending our energy so that God gives us and blesses us with more energy. Uh, moving on to uh, number uh, no, Isaiah 40, 31. Yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. And that's that where I'm going with this. Uh, they will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Because they're getting their strength from the Lord. Number nine, another major area of priority is our family. It's almost as easy to lower the priority of our family as it is to lower the priority of spending time with God. Because we tend to take both of them for granted. Like I said earlier, if you want your kids to know Christ, then we got to prioritize that we can invest in them so that they will know Christ. I guess fill that on in. One of the things that all of us have, uh, time is the great equalizer. All of us have the same amount of time um, as everyone else. So we all give in 24 hours. And yet some people are able to accomplish more than others. And that's because they've learned to prioritize their time and spend it wisely and get more accomplished. But it doesn't matter. You can be rich or poor. All of us are given the same thing, same amount of time. It's just how are we prioritizing. Number 10, the, those who faithfully make goals and a do list and a and to do list that are that are an expression of their priorities have a much easier time saying no. When you know what your goals are and you know what you want to do, it's easier to say no because it does not fit. Does it fit what you're trying to accomplish? I know for me, it's easy to say yes to everything. In a large part because I feel guilty if I don't. So learning to prioritize my goals has made it easier for me to say no. And for example, I said no to a phone call just now because this is my priority. So I uh, said no. All that person later. Number 11. Our daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly goals are supposed to put pressure on us so that we work harder, faster, and smarter. My goal is to read through the Bible in a year. My goal is to spend 15 minutes praying. My goal is to become more knowledgeable of Scripture and have it memorized. Well, that's putting pressure on us, that yearly goal, so that we focus on doing the right things on our to-do list to get the things done, working harder at accomplishing Goal. Um, I'm doing it faster, smart. It's you know, doing the verses here with all of you it puts makes it a priority on me to memorize the scripture and memorize his word. Uh, it's positive peer pressure that I feel because if I'm the pastor and I'm not doing these things, then I feel like I'm second. I have positive peer pressure that I'm receiving from you guys, which has been a benefit. To me, because it makes it so that I actually prioritize these things in our lives. In our lives. We often overestimate what we could do in a day and underestimate what we could do in a year. We make a to-do list, helps us figure out what we could actually get done in a day, 
And then that was realized we could actually do a whole lot more in a year than we think. Number 12, faithful use of time. A time won't happen without a sense of urgency that creates pressure on us. We always function best under pressure. So was there anybody in school when you were younger that put off big projects until the very end? What was that? Was there anybody else when you were younger had a big school project that you put off until the end and then you tried to accomplish it? Or, and you did accomplish it. Did anybody do that in school or was I the only one? No, I can't say that I got challenged. I think we all did. <laughs> I think we all did on that. I learned that I could do a big school project the day before if I had to. Now, would I have been wiser to do 10 minutes every single day? Yeah. But I'd probably done better. Yes. But I learned that I could actually function under pressure when needed. So if we say, okay, I'm going to give myself a limit a time limit to accomplish these things on my to-do list, to accomplish these goals today, then we tend to do better compared to we say, okay, for example, I can say, um, today I'm going to clean my office. Well, I may waste most of my day in my office goofing off and really only cleaning the last half hour and feeling like i got to get it all done and working really hard to get it done, but I could do it. Where it would be better for me if I were to take that same time and, and use it wisely um, and, and do the clean my office in the first half hour of my day and then use the rest of my eight hours to accomplish even more goals. All of us have what we call transition points uh, that we can use more wisely as well. For example, a transition point would be uh, when you're between things. For like even driving, I've learned that I could pray while I'm driving. I could listen to a podcast while I'm driving. So I'm recapturing that time that I would be listening to the radio and not really doing anything with it and reusing it to focus on, on accomplishing one of my goals or something on my to-do list. I even recaptured my bathroom time. Uh, I use it to, to pray. I use that time to be in God's word. It's so I'm recapturing that time. So I could get more done. So try to find those uh, transition times to actually get more done throughout the day and recap. We that call time. that we call that multitasking now, Paul. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> uh, Melissa was saying that when she walks her dog, that she uses that time now to pray. She's recaptured that time now to to use it for more than just walking the dog. Number 13, there are two kinds of pressure. The pressure we put on ourselves and the pressure the world puts on us. The world has plans for you and it may not be for your best. you got to determine what pressure are you going to make the important one in your life. Pressure, 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 world. I got to say, now that I walk with Jesus, all the anxiety and the stress and the, the demands of this world are not on me anymore. I'm healthier. I'm happier. I mean, it, it's true. When your stress level goes down, your health gets better. You, mm -hmm. you just, you know, all that anxiety and the, the fear, you know, being afraid of something all the time that's just gone now i mean i'm just ecstatic i'm just wake up happy every morning even though things may not be going my way i always got to remember that i'm better off than a lot of people you know because just if i have my five senses i'm better shaped than a lot of people in this world you know we we sometimes forget to give god thanks for just the life in our lungs we get so focused on oh i don't have this or i don't have that and we push ourselves too hard but now that i don't live in the world as per se as what you know the world wants me to 
life is great. Mm -hmm. Well said, Brent. Number 14. The more we make use of goals and a to-do list, the more we will be in control of what and who puts pressure on us. So there are certain people that put pressure on me. Uh, I'll let you write this down a little bit. The people that put pressure on me is one, my wife puts pressure on me, and rightfully so. Uh, the other one is uh, the elders of this church put pressure on me in a, in a positive way too, so that way I'm, you know, I think I'm supposed to be doing so the church members uh, to a certain extent, some more than others. Uh, and then also I would even say when I meet with like anybody who's doing any type of coaching with me, for example, like with D Duke, he puts pressure on me as well to make sure that I'm doing the things I'm supposed to be doing. Those are people that I have given permission to put pressure on me, help me stay focused and accomplish the goals I want. Do the things I need to do. And so I allow those people um, to put the right pressure on me. An accountability partner. Yeah, essential, yes. Not all pressure is negative. You have positive peer pressure and you have negative peer pressure. This is, would be positive peer pressure. Yep. Number 15, out of control living, which what you talked about, causes anxiety, guilt, and stress. The question for you is why does out of control living cause anxiety, guilt, and stress? You don't know where you're going. You're just, you're just flailing. Hmm? Conviction. Conviction. If you have out of control living and it's April 14th and you realize that taxes are due tomorrow and you haven't done anything, will you feel any anxiety, stress, or guilt? Oh, yeah, definitely. Hopefully. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on if I owe money or they owe me money. <laughs> That's true. You just might feel guilt that you didn't get it done, so now you're not going to get your money. But uh, at least not as much. Hey, I got to share this with you. I was watching a sermon today, and this guy brought this up. He said um, a man sent in a money order to the IRS, and he said he, had, he cheated on his taxes last year. And he hadn't been able to get any sleep at all. So he sent a money order for $150. And he said, and if I don't get any sleep after this, I'll send you the rest of what I owe you later. <laughs> Signed a taxpayer. <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> Number 16. Nobody will ever be a good steward of their time who does not want really want to accomplish more with their life that matters. You really want to accomplish more. It's got to come from within. When I do counseling, I have discovered I cannot tell people what to do. It does not work. They have to decide that's what they want to do. I can guide them. I can walk them through the process. I can make them see the logical conclusion of what they should do, but they've got to make that decision or they will not do it. <laughs> you really see that with me. <laughs> they don't want to do it. You can talk to them, you're blue in your face, and they're not going to do it. Number 17, a key time to management is working faster and harder as well as smarter. All of us have dead times in our life, and so it's using those uh, times correctly. It's uh, reacquiring those times. I forgot the word I just heard it. Uh, putting time limit. Just because uh, one is busy doesn't mean that they are actually uh, producing anything. You can be busy and not produce much, not be very productive. And that leads us to the next one, number 18. We tend to think if we're really struggling to get everything done, then we must be too busy. Probably just spending too much time wasting. Time. 
Isn't that saying, if you want something done, give it to a busy person or something along those lines? I think I ruined it, but if you want something done, give it to somebody who's busy. They'll find time to do it. If you give it to somebody who's not busy, then they'll probably put it off. Truth to that, yeah. There's a movie with Will Smith, and I forget what it was, about the true story about how this guy was homeless and how he had a he wanted to get into stock market. He was really busy, uh, but he was being productive the entire time. So he made sure that everything he did was productive. He wouldn't even go drink water because he knew if he drank water, then he'd have to go use the bathroom. He would lose time. That's the pursuit of happiness. Yes, yes, that was a crazy. Movie. <laughs> I, by the way, do drink water. I am not that. <laughs> if oh, you find, you. find an easy way to do something give that project to a lazy man he'll figure out the easy way to get it done <laughs> that sounds like uh, Dilbert cartoon <laughs> yeah but it's true man I mean you give a, a, a lazy man an objective and he's going to find the easiest way to do it I kind of I kind of have you ever heard the phrase, don't work harder, work smarter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I kind of have a little, there's a lot to that, especially in the trade I was in. I mean, it's in guys like you were saying, they looked busy, but they were fighting it. And if they would have just been a little bit smarter and thought, that, thought it out before, they wouldn't be having those problems. So I think there's a lot to say about being educated in what you proceed to do. What you know, work smarter. I think it's good to work smarter. I also think it's good to work harder. So you get more accomplished. And that's really what my goal is, to work smarter and work harder to get more accomplished, even more so. Uh, number 19, we can train ourselves to enjoy being busy. So we can enjoy being busy, make that a priority in our life, or we can train ourselves to enjoy God. we lead to number Funny here. Come on, you ready? Ready, ready. Okay, number 20 is a major principle in the training process to always rejoice, to be thankful for being considered worthy of lots to do for the Lord. I was watching a movie with my wife the other day uh, about Jeremy Camp. I can't think of the name of the movie right now, but uh, in it, one of the actors in there, actress, she goes, you know, in the Milky Way, there are three billion star, stars. Uh, in the Andromeda galaxy, there are a trillion stars in that galaxy. Like, and the God who created all those trillions of stars knows my name and knows me. Just being thankful that God who created all these things knows who I am and has chosen to use me and finds me worth Uh, Philippians 4 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. The first Thessalonians says, Rejoice always. That is what we're to do. We're to rejoice, finding, uh, be thankful that God considers us worthy. Number 21, a major issue in being a good steward is being motivated by a desire to please the Lord. Who do we end up trying to please most of the time? The world. Yeah, the world or ourselves. I find usually it's ourselves because even if we are pleasing the world, we're doing it for ourselves. Yeah, being busy is an interesting idea. I mean, depends on what your motivations are, and we can busy ourselves out, out way out of the priorities um, <laughs> in the name of God, but it's really depends on what your motivations are, you know, and you can put your family on the back burner for the sake of everything else. But again, I think we just have to, you have to look at a, your, your heart. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm rambling. No, no. The average parent spends two minutes with their child a day. That's crazy. Isn't that insane? Well, it shows if you, go to school <laughs> schools these days yeah. <laughs> you say Number, two, oh, minutes. two minutes 
That's yeah. good. Okay. You tend to get a little bit more than that. I think I get <laughs> I more than two minutes. minutes. I might get three. You might get, get three. three. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting nothing tonight. So, um, <laughs> remember how we're going to watch the Hobbit movie tonight? No. Moving on. Number 22. Oh, I'm sorry. Versus. We have quite a few verses here. But I have received everything in full and have an abundance. I am amply supplied because the God has supplied it. Having received from uh, Aphrodite or Aphroditus what you have sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. But here are some people that God has provided for uh, Paul because these people were willing to sacrifice it because of the sacrifice God accepted the sacrifice to himself. Uh, so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects. Bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. First John 3. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. So we're pleasing the Lord. And we have, and he who sent me is with me. He who has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. Here's Jesus talking about pleasing God, Father. Proverbs 16. When a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he will make even his enemies be at peace with him. Want peace in your life? He's the Lord. Jeremiah 27. I have made the earth, the men and the beasts which are on the face of the earth by my great power and by my outstretched arm. And I will give it to the one who is pleasing in my sight. So if you want to receive more, please God. Uh, sorry, this is not perhaps changed to white. And behold, a voice out of the heaven said, This is my beloved son, who I am well pleased. And that's when Jesus is being baptized. This is what God has to say about it. He's pleased with the son. And then at the Mount of Transfiguration, he says, While he was speaking, this is Jesus up on a mountain. A bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Second Corinthians chapter 5, from Paul's uh, writing this. Therefore, we also have uh, as our ambition, whatever at home or absent, to be pleasing to him. Ephesians, Paul writes this, trying to learn what is pleasing to the Lord by, this is uh, in the book of Hebrews is, uh, I believe this is Paul who wrote this, I'm not sure, but I believe he wrote this. By faith, he did not so that he would not see death, and he was not found because he was not for them. One right, for he obtained the witness that before his being taken up, he was easy to God. I will have to Number 22. A king's high man that is always focusing on the end of our life is judgment to our life. A little bit of feedback. Do you want to be motivated? Uh, the end of our life when we're standing before Christ. In fact, all of us are going to have to give an account for every word and every deed we've ever done. Paul writes that about that right here. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore, also we have as our ambition whether as home or absent should be pleasing to him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one may be recomposed for his deeds in God. According to what he has done, whether good or bad, and we will all give an account. You will also find out in the book of Romans. That concludes this today. I'm going to go ahead and stop presenting. I'm going to try to stop recording. And stop the recording. I'm going to get this recording. Hey, goodbye. Bye.